Our guest today in the studio is Myra Maimo. During the day, she's a mom chasing after three small children, but on weekends, she exchanges her mother wardrobe for elegant stage wear as she entertains audiences across her native Cameroon and now the United States. Myra, we're thrilled to have you here and feel like you belong. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. You bet. So talk about the, the genesis of your career because you began singing quite young. I did. I did actually. I started singing at the age of three and um, I would always be picked in my class to lead songs in school and I loved it. And after that, going to primary school, through secondary school, I joined the choir. And from then onwards, I started singing in a girl band. And from then, I went to the studio doing backup uh, singing for the other Cameroonian artists. And after that, I started just doing my own thing. So what was the name of your girl band? Um, well, I had so many. Started with Cherubi, Cherubi Queens, very funny name, but yeah. We're called Cherubi Queens. And another name was uh, Crystals, the Crystal Girls. Okay. Yeah, so it, it was a lot of fun. Did, you, did fun. you get to pick the names? Um, we did, and it, the, we had to like go over and over and over, especially with the Cherubi Queens. Because <laughs> a, a lot of us, we thought it wasn't really that cool, but we finally settled on that. And um, we used it for a while, and uh, some members left, and we ended up forming a new group called uh, Crystals. So, so as, as I mentioned before, you're originally from Cameroon. Yes. Uh, what part of Cameroon? I come from the northwest region of Cameroon, and that is one of the English-speaking parts of Cameroon. Cameroon is bilingual. We speak um, French and English as our official languages. The main colonial language of Cameroon is French. After Germany got beaten, Cameroon was split up between uh, France and England, and that is how we ended up with uh, those official languages. Okay. Yeah. So, but you're in the corner of Cameroon I, where English is yes, the I predominant am the, European language. Yes. Okay, good. So, were, when you were in the girl bands, were you traveling around the the region, or mostly just in your hometown? We were mostly just in our hometown. Okay. Yeah. We we were still really young. I don't think our parents would have let us go anywhere at that age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So, at what point did it become apparent to you, and then maybe also to your parents, that this might be a career? Um, that was in secondary school um, when I got invited to a couple of places to sing, to do backup singing for some artists. And I actually discovered that I could make a lot of money from that. My mom wasn't very thrilled about that, but <laughs> after a while she warmed up to it. And it wasn't really uh, about the money. It was just that I loved doing it. I loved singing with people. I loved um, just having the mic and um, I loved dancing. So it just came together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And truly, I've, I've lived in West Africa as we talked about yeah. earlier. And I think more so than in the United States, music uh, across much of Africa is just part of your, as part of your life, as part oh, of your it being. Is. It is. People are playing music everywhere. It is. And so it if is. you can do that as, as your job, Oh yeah, it is. That's, I would really, really would put it that way, it's through music, because when people are sad, they sing and they dance. When they, somebody dies, they sing and they dance. When there's something to celebrate, we are dancing and singing. So it's um, a very important part of our lives. And um, I, I'm really blessed that I'm able to um, have that as a career too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your music has become quite popular because people are playing it not just in Cameroon, but around a yes. lot of Africa these days. Yes, it is. I am very thankful for that. Um, it started off in, in Europe. That's where my, I, I produced uh, my first album. I released my first album. And it um, went back home, just probably because I'm Cameroonian. And Cameroonians were like, oh, that's a girl. <laughs> so they got into it. And from that, uh, it just spread onwards to, to the other um, African countries. And what I'm happy about is that um, I am able to encourage people because I do mostly inspirational music mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes gospel, but the message is inspirational. So um, I am happy that I'm able to touch people all over. And my dream is just for everybody in the world, like somewhere to actually just um, connect with um, uh, my message. Yeah, that, and that connection is really important. It is, it is, because it's not just about the music and the dancing, and it's, it's, I should be able to uplift somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So now you had promised that you would sing a song for us. Sure, I would. Okay, and so tell me what you're going to be singing. I will be singing Anugotaya, and Anugotaya is a song that just says, uh, I won't stop. And in the song I say, I won't stop loving um, my dad who passed away mm -hmm. a few years ago. And I won't stop loving God because the whole song represents the, um, the father thing for me. Okay. Like, yeah, like reconnecting with um, um, my father in mm -hmm. a way. Yeah. So it's persevere, don't get tired. Don't get tired, don't okay. get tired, okay. yeah. Okay, wonderful. Look forward to hearing that. Thank you, thank you. Hi everyone, um, my name is Myra Maimo and I have my amazing friend Doug Chu with me and we're going to be singing an original song called Anogutaya. So. <laughs>
Thank you. So that was amazing. Thank you so much. Really enjoyed that. And <laughs> thanks for bringing Doug along to sing with oh, you. Oh, yeah. So we have, are really happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So have you worked with Doug much in the past? Yes, we have, actually. We um, go to the same church, so we lead worship quite so often Madison together. Square? Yes, right. okay. we do. Okay. Madison at the Ford, that's another branch of Madison Square. Okay. Yeah. okay. Well, good thing you can't confine it to one building. You yeah. Oh, yeah. Share the joy across, <laughs> the, across the city. Yes. Yeah. So how much of the music that you sing, perform, and record is your own music? Um, most of it, most of it. The first album, um, just a few songs were mine. Mm -hmm. um, the rest were written by my producer, Mbachi Hale. But the second one, all of it was done by me. And um, I really, in my second album, I really wanted to, to show who I am mm -hmm. and really connect um, Africa with uh, my my preferred genre, which is R and B and soul, okay. so uh, I tried to do that as much as I could, and mm -hmm. yeah, I am happy it turned out okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's fantastic. So, do you get homesick? I do. Oh my God, I do. What, I do. What do you What do you miss? I mean, obviously, family, people. Yes. What else do you miss? Um, I miss um, just the. The flavors, the, the flavors, the, the, when you go back home, you have um, lots of people selling food on the street, and mm -hmm. I miss that, I miss that. Um, I miss the chaos, the traffic chaos, where nobody follows the rules. <laughs> well, sometimes the United States is an advantage because we're a little bit organized, yes, yes. but sometimes it can feel a little sterile a little antiseptic mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm, and i understand mm -hmm. that you know west africa central africa um people are more just involved and and everything comes to hit you you know the sounds and smells yes. and sights oh, and yes. it's yes it's, yes. Uh, it's, it's more intense yeah it is it's, it's chaos and i love it yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and if that's what you know and grew up with then yeah. you miss it yeah, yeah yeah i miss i miss the music i miss um <sighs> church on Sunday because uh, it's like a grand grand affair everybody shows up in their their colorful attires and uh, they're ready to just dance like they were dancing at a night and it's more than just like one narrow hour oh yeah it is more than that if you go go to ch church just be ready to spend at least two hours there because mm -hmm. um, people just line up and they dance to go for off a tree they dance and go back um, Eucharist time they dance and go so mm -hmm. It's a lot more interactive. It than, is. It and is. if you grew up maybe some Protestant denominations in the United States, a little more yeah, sit in your yeah, seats and yeah. being polite and, <laughs> and uh, less interactive. So. It, is, it is also good in, in, in its own way. It, it, it took me some time to get used to it, mm -hmm. but um, I, I love it now. Like wh where I worship at uh, Madison at Ford, it's it's a combination of all. Of, of course, I won't get what I got from from Africa, but mm -hmm. I I love the 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 contemplative style too. So it's not all boomba by everybody dancing, but you you really get to sit down quietly and also um, um, you can still get that connection with God. So it's it's still fun. As I mentioned earlier uh, in the intro, you have three small children. Yes, I do. How are you coping? Because you've got <laughs> four-year-old, two-year-old, and an infant. <laughs> he needs to come to my house one day and he'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've known that chaos myself, but uh, it's been many years. And so yeah, yeah. It's tiring, but you look alert and fresh. It and is, it is. Um, some days are like, oh, 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 because they are running all over the house, 
pulling things down and screaming and and they, they, they like dancing a lot and, they, and singing so well where do they get that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so it's it's fun i love i love them mm -hmm. and obviously it's 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 a difficult age group to deal with mm. and we're just handling it as much as we can we have our friends chipping into helping out a lot so that that, it that takes a village that takes away some of the pressure but it's yeah. it's quite involved <laughs> so now back home you, you i'm i'm guessing there's not this concept of babysitter like having a stranger come in and you pay them no, you you've no, got family no. around you've got friends and there's just this more fluid arrangement of yes you know somebody's watching the kids and, oh yeah but yeah back home is so much easier because um we believe that uh um the community brings up the child mm -hmm. so anybody out your neighbors can teach your kids so uh or discipline your kids when they go wrong it's quite different from here mm -hmm. and it's also very easy to just um maybe if you had something to do you just go hand your kids over to your neighbor and you know they'll be fine you come back there they're okay they, they are they're clean mm -hmm. so it's 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 very easy but also in every african home you never really find just the mother and the father and the the kids mm -hmm. there are always second cousins or somebody multiple generations yes there's always somebody there so it's we don't really do babysitting per se yeah. the family takes care of the, the children sure because it's not just this nuclear family no, but it's not extended and yes that's yeah. the beauty and yeah. uh, those are some of the things that I really miss here because um, finding uh, it's painful sometimes like evenings when you just want to go out and do so it's so difficult to, to get uh, babysitters you know and um, we, we, we're getting there. Okay. okay. <laughs> we're adjusting. Have you started connecting with the African community in West Michigan? Oh, yes, I have. Yes, I have. Um, the, the, this year has really been brilliant for me. I met um, Jeru, Mr. Jeru, okay. and he introduced me to you and other people. And just it just opened doors because I was like, oh, Grand Rapids. I really don't know what to think about Grand Rapids because it, it looks like there's really not much happening. But um, yeah, I'm really grateful for, for the opportunities now that, I, that I've been getting. Mm -hmm. And all of that came through because I uh, got in contact with, with, with uh, the African Collaborative Network mm -hmm. through um, G uh, Mr. Njeru. Yeah. yeah, who is a marvelous uh, is community resource yeah, and he is just amazing. a really good person. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So are you starting to get some invitations to perform locally? Um, not yet with uh, the, the invitations, but I'm having people ask about what I do and okay. uh, my website. I'm having more people take interest in, in my music. I'm still waiting for the invitations. Okay, so if we were to put the website on the screen, then people could contact you. That and, would be great. Uh, and that look at uh, booking information and oh, yeah. uh, maybe how to buy some of your CDs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'd love yeah. that. So yeah. now clearly you have such a, such a joy in yourself and it comes through in your music. And so I think <laughs> we could all use a little bit more more joy in oh, our lives. Oh, thank so, you. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. So uh, we're going to have to wrap up in just a minute, but the theme of our show is belonging. Mm -hmm. For you, what is the essence of belonging, of welcome? What is what does it mean for you? It's just opening up, accepting differences, learning more about people, being ready to drop um, uh, stereotypes of what we already think about anybody before we meet them. Uh, clean slate, not being scared, and just try try something new. When we try something new, we try new food, we get to meet new people, we get to, to know about new cultures, we get to um, know about different people, that things can be done a different way and that they can still succeed, mm -hmm. you know, just something different from, from what we're used to. And um, I, I am already starting to feel like I belong here because, I, like I told you before, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to stay in Grand Rapids. Um, but with all of this, I know that I have a place now. And that was just because um, I was able to talk with you and you were able to give me opportunities just as uh, well as um, Ruben mm -hmm. did. So I'm really grateful for that. Well, we're really lucky to have you as a, a member of our community. And Thank so, you. Uh, good luck in your, in your career and the other really important career of raising up these three Thank marvelous you. Oh, I need uh, that. children. <laughs> and, yeah, well, we all need, need help in, 
in those directions. But thanks so much for coming by. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us. If you're watching on TV, stay with us for some tips on American English, culture, and humor. For our friends watching on the internet, we hope you'll join our ongoing conversation with the impressive immigrants who contribute their vast skills to making the United States a better place. But basically, within the United States, the major good cause that lottery money goes to in most states is education.